Hello and welcome to NGen Math 6 by eMath Instruction. I'm Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 4 on Multi-Digit Multiplication and Division. Now a lot of what we do today is going to be kind of algorithmic, meaning we're going to be just kind of going through the techniques of how do you multiply multi-digit numbers, how do you divide and think about multi-digit division, all right? But we do want to start with at least one exercise that gets at why the algorithm for multi-digit multiplication works the way it does. So let's jump in and take a look at that. All right, exercise number one. A rectangle has a length of 32 feet and a width of 24 feet. It is broken into four sections with lengths as shown in the picture. So let's talk about this a little bit and let's make sure you understand what's kind of motivating all of this. Ultimately speaking, we want to find the area of this overall rectangle. You know, how many square feet fall inside of it and we know that that's going to be 32 times 24. All right, but what we've done is taken the 32 foot long length and broken into 30 feet and 2 feet and the 24 foot long width and broken it into 20 feet and 4 feet. And what we're now going to do in part A is we're going to find the area of each of the four rectangles in the picture and write down their areas inside of each. Then we're going to add up all those total areas to find, or all those areas to find the total area inside. So let's talk about each one of these rectangles in turn. All right. Maybe the hardest one to find the area of is 20 times 30. But keep in mind that that's going to be 2 times 10 times 3 times 10. Multiplication's got this great property where we can do it in any order we want. So that's 6 times 3, or 2 times 3, which is 6. 10 times 10, which is 100. And so the area of that particular rectangle will be 600. All right? Now, our rectangle that is 20 feet by 2 feet, that's pretty easy because that's simply going to be 20 times 2, and we should all know that that's 40. I'm going to circle our areas here. Very similarly, 4 times 30, right? 4 times 30 is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12, with another 0 tacked on. And finally, the easiest of all the areas is going to be our rectangle that is 4 by 2. That rectangle down here, and that's 4 times 2, or 8. Now, of course, what we now have is we've got 600 plus 120 plus 40, plus 8. When we add them all together, granted we don't have a lot of room, we get 600, 768 square feet. Now, the main purpose of that exercise though is to help you understand the algorithm, and we're going to go through it right now, but the algorithm on how to multiply multiple digit numbers. So let's, let's review that. So if I want to multiply 32 times 24, recall what I do is I'm going to take my 32 and I'm going to multiply it by 4. Let's do that. So first, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 4 times 3 is 12. Literally, that is 32 times 4. But remember, when we then want to go down and multiply by the 2, we're going to first add a 0 on. Why? Because we're not really multiplying by 2, we're multiplying by 20, right? This is not 2 and 4, this is 20 and 4. So now we're just going to do 32 times 2, and that's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, 2 times 3, which is 6, and add them, and we get our 768. Now, the problem also say, how do the rows of this product relate to the areas of the rectangle? Well, kind of keep in mind, right, if we can see them on the board at the same time, there we had 600, 120, 40, and 8. Well, look at this 128, right? That's really 120 plus 8, and that 640 is 600 
plus 40, right? You can see all four of those separate areas right here. 120, the 8, the 600, and the 40. And the real key here, right, the thing that we want to review is that you're really multiplying 32 by two numbers, 20 and 4. When you multiply by the 4, ah, you just get 128. That's simple. But when you multiply by the 20, you have to add that zero first in order to get the right number down here. All right, so let's review this algorithm some more in the next problem, okay? Exercise two, find each of the following products using the standard algorithm, carefully show your work. All right, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video for maybe about five, 10 minutes, as long as you need, work through each one of these. And this first one, because we're only multiplying by eight, we're never gonna have to do that second row. We're gonna have to do a little carrying, but we won't have to do any kind of second row down here. So pause the video, take a little bit of time to work through these three. All right, let's go through them. 56 times eight. First thing we're gonna do is eight times six and we're gonna get 48. Remember, we write the eight down, but we carry the four up here. We now do eight times five and we get 40 and then we add the four, so we get 44. So in total, 448 when we do 56 times eight. Now, in the second problem where we have a two digit times two digit, that's where we're gonna to have to add more rows. So let's get into that. The first thing I'm gonna do is multiply 65 by two. Two times five is 10, again, carry the one. Two times six is 12, then I add an extra one to get 13. I'm now gonna add a zero in. Four times five is 20. I'll put that zero down there, I'm gonna cross that one out and I'll put a two up here. Four times six is 24, add another two, and I get 26. Now I'm gonna add those, zero, three, seven, two, and I find that 65 times 42 is 2,730. Finally, let's do 28 times 28. Of course, you can multiply a number by itself. Let's see what we get, all right? Eight times eight is 64 carry that six. Two times eight, or eight times two is 16, plus six is 22. Put down a zero. Two times eight is 16, carry the one, scratch that out really quick. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Add them up, four, eight, seven. 784. All right. So again, mainly what we wanted to do is we wanted to review this idea that in every line, and if we had another line to add, we'd have two zeros that we'd have to tack on. Another line, three zeros we'd have to tack on. Quite frankly, when we get to numbers that large, it probably will make more sense to just simply use a calculator to ensure accuracy and speed in our work. But many times we wanna be able to do these kind of calculations quickly on the side of a paper to try to solve a problem. Let's keep going. All right, number three. Chris finds that he can plant 204 sunflower seeds between six garden beds so that each bed receives the same number of seeds. Letter A asks us to write a division problem and solve it to find out how many seeds get planted in each bed. All right, so this is all about division, right? I've got these 204 sunflower seeds. I've got six garden beds that I wanna plant them in. How many do each get? Well, the division problem is very simple. I wanna find 204 divided by six. Now, in order to really kind of pull this type of division off, we'll oftentimes go like this, right? I'll put my 204 under the division symbol. I'll then have six out here. And now I wanna think about this division. Now remember how I do this. I think, ah, how many times does six go into two? Eh, six doesn't go into two because two is smaller than six. Well, how many times will six go into 20? Well, let's see, two times, three times, oh, three times, right? Because three times six is 18. So three times six is 18. I subtract, I get two, and then I drop the four down. And then I ask myself, how many times does six go into 24? That's four times, four times six is 24. Again, I subtract and I get a remainder of zero. 
So 34 seeds in each one of those bets. Now, letter B says write a multiplication problem and solve it to check your work from A. Well, all right, what does that mean exactly? Pause the video now and see if you can do a multiplication problem that checks to make sure that 34 is the correct answer. All right, well, it's this simple. If 34 is the correct answer, then 6 times 34 should give us 204. And let's take a look, right? So 34 times 6, well, 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2. 6 times 3 is 18, add 2 more, and I get 204. So yeah, right? If I plant 34 seeds in each one of my six beds, I'll use up my 204 seeds, right? And that gets into how we do division. Now, in this case, it was relatively simple because we were dividing a multi-digit number by a single digit number. So let's review that a little bit in the next exercise, right? It's really important to be able to take a multi-digit number, no matter how many digits there are, and divide by a single digit, right? Let's go through that in exercise four, letter A, where we have 84 divided by three. Well, if I wanna figure this out, right, I think to myself, all right, how many times does three go into eight? Well, it goes in there up to two times, right? And two times three, ah, I can't get rid of that pointer. Two times three is six, eight minus six is two. And then I bring that four down. And now how many times does three go into 24? It goes in there eight times, eight times three is 24. I subtract and I get zero. So 84 divided by three is 28. Why don't you pause the video now for a few minutes and figure out the answers to letter B and C. All right, let's go through them. 335 divided by five. All right, how many times does five go into 33? Well, it goes in there six times, right? Because six times five is 30, which when we subtract, leaves us with just three as a remainder. I then drop my five down and I ask how many times does five go into 35? And that's seven times. Seven times five is 35, subtract and I get zero. So 335 divided by five is 67. All right, let's take a look at letter C. 592 divided by eight. Well, how many times does eight go into 59? Well, eight times five is 40, times six is 48, times seven is 56, ah, there it is. Right? So eight times seven is 56. When I do the subtraction, I get three, drop down that two, I get a two, 32, and four times eight is 32. So 592 divided by eight is 74. And what I am literally doing when I do this kind of algorithm is I'm actually using multiplication to figure out the result of a division problem. Think about that, right? I'm like, well, let's see, I uh, do six times five and I get 30 and I subtract and I get 35. And then I do, all right, seven times five is 35. I keep doing multiplication in order to figure out the answer to division. And that's because they are what are known in math as inverses of each other. You can almost think of them as opposites, right? Now, division gets much, much more challenging when the number that you're dividing by, known as the divisor, is a double digit, triple digit, et cetera, number. And let's talk about that in the next exercise. All right, exercise number five. Find each of the following quotients. Answer, all answers will be whole numbers. All right, so let's talk about this. Much trickier now, because now I'm thinking about how many times 23 goes into 1,035. Now the way you wanna think about this is kind of like, well, will 23 go into the first two digit number, 10? No, because 10 is smaller than 23. So now I have to think about how many times 23 goes into 103. And that can be challenging, right? It can be tough. So like, maybe you make a guess. Like for instance, let's say I thought, ah, let me try five. Let's, let's try five. So I'm gonna put a five up here, right? And five times 23, well that's gonna be 15. Carry the one, five times two is 10. And one is 11. Now, let's step back for a moment, right? 
5 is not the right number because the 115 is larger than the 103. 5 was too big, so I, I botched it. You know what I mean? And that's okay. You will find that you will make a lot of mistakes when you do this kind of division. And that's okay. I make these kind of mistakes all the time. All right? So it wasn't 5. I should probably try 4. Let's, let's do 4. All right? So let me do 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 1 is 9. Now I'm going to do the subtraction. And when I subtract, I get 11. Now, before I even drop that 5 down, I'm comfortable with the 11. And here's why. That remainder of 11 is smaller than 23. If that number had been bigger than 23, then I should have a bigger number up here. But it's smaller than 23, so I'm golden, right? I'm now going to drop that 5 down, right? And now I have to figure out how many times does 23 go into 115. That is, in fact, 5 times. I'm going to cross out this 1 so it's not confusing. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 1 is 11. I subtract and I get 0. Division can be amazingly frustrating for kids because unlike multiplication where it's mostly about memorized facts and algorithms, division there's a lot of guess and check, right? Oh, I started with a 5 and it was wrong. So I got to cross that out and I'll go with a 4, see if that works, right? Let's do one more together and then have you do the last one on your own. All right, let's take a look at this one. 14 divided into 868 or put it another way, 868 divided by 14. First thing I need to think about is how many times does 14 go into 86? All right, well, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's 7 times. Let me try 7, okay? Well, 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 more is 9. Well, nope, because 98 is bigger than 86. So that's no good, right? Well, just luckily for me, I can very easily do this. You should be writing in a pencil so you can easily erase. So it wasn't 7. Let's try 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. Oh, I like it. 84. Because when I subtract, I get a remainder of just 2. That 2 is smaller than the 14. I'm golden. I'm going to drop my 8 down. Now this is pretty easy to think about. How many times does 14 go into 28, right? 14 goes into 28 two times. 2 times 14 is 28. Subtract remainder of 0. Okay. So what I'd like you to do in our absolute last problem of the day is I'd like you to pause the video and see how many times does 75 divide into 1,650. All right. Let's do it. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to start with 2. So 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15. When I subtract 150 from 165, I'm left with 15. So that's a good thing, right? Because the 15 is less than the 75. I'm now going to drop the 0 down. All right, and I know that 2 times 75 already is 150. So my quotient is equal to 22. All right, hopefully you got that one right. Nice, nice answer. Let's do some summary. All right, today what we did was we reviewed how to multiply multi-digit numbers and also how to divide them, especially division that results in whole numbers, right? Whole number quotients, no remainders today. Okay. Mostly, we wanted to review these algorithms because you're going to need them later on in the course, especially once we start to multiply and divide decimals. But that's like at least unit three, at least unit three. So we've got some time. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.